as we begin on this Sunday morning, we first of all want to thank each and every one for being here at One Accord Church this morning. We're glad to have you. Uh, it is our fifth Sunday. It's our youth Sunday. So we just want to just thank you for tuning into this service as well. And by the way, if you're viewing us live or you might even be on our website, which is oneaccordchurch.net. Again, that website is oneaccordchurch.net. You can go on there, catch all our services streaming live. And also you can go on and leave us prayer request needs or email us the information. We'd be more than glad to get back up with you. And also for those of you that are on our television programs, we don't want to thank you for tuning in as well. And we always want to invite you to come join us at One Accord Church. Um, more than ever, the situation in the world is we simply believe that the Word of God is our only hope that we have as America. Amen? And if you believe in that, we'd love for you to, to join us. Now, as um, we talk about this message now, I'm going to be honest with you. It's going to be a hard pill to swallow. So, amens probably will be short. <laughs> and very quiet. But this is important. Let me tell you why this is important. This is what the Lord put on my heart. Um, and sometimes I don't really like what the Lord tells me to do. But guess what I've learned? You better do it. And let me tell you why I want to do this message. More than, yes, my Father God, but because of our young people. Guys, uh, more than ever, um, we don't see it happening. But I'm going to give you some statistics just to kind of open our eyes as the church in general of what's taking place. In fact, the name of this message is Why Christianity, Christianity Failing, Why is Christianity Failing in America? Well, let me share this stuff with you a little bit to give you an, an eye opener and open our eyes up. Everybody, can everybody hear me? Good. Security's got the door so nobody can leave. That's good. We got that taken care of. Listen to these statistics, guys. America still boasts of being a Christian nation. But when it comes to religious practice, Christianity is in a state of serious decline. Among self-professed Christians, morality is at, is at all-time low. The key is that Christianity in America is failing because the church has forsaken its foundation of separateness from the world. The unfortunate result is worldliness masquerading as Christianity. Two studies conducted by both the Barna Group and the USA Today found, listen closely, that nearly 75% of Christian youth people fall away from the faith and leave the church after high school. 75%. And that 60% of today's youth adults in their 20s who had regularly attended church during their teen years are now spiritually disengaged. Not actively attending church, not reading the Bible, and not praying. 60%. So that don't sound good. Listen to this. In fact, according to the research, the younger the generation, the more post-Christian it is. This becomes apparent when we look across the following four demographic groups. This covers everybody. Group one, the elders that are born 1945 or earlier. They're called the elder group. 28% are now post-Christians. The baby boomers from 1946 to 1964, you know who you are. 35% <laughs> are now post-Christians. From 1965 to 1983, they're called the busters. From 1965 to 1963, listen, 40% of them are now post-Christians. We call these the millennials. From 1984 to 2002, 48% are now post 
Christians. Young Americans are dropping out of religion at an alarming rate of five to six times the historic rate. At current dropout rates, only about 4% of American teens will end up as Bible-believing adult church growers. Compare this to the 35% of the baby boomers and 65% of their World War II era grandparents. Only 4% of American youth will end up believing the Bible. Last but not least, according to this data, of the 77 million Americans who claim to be church-going, born-again Christians, fully half of them admit that they had not experienced a genuine connection with God over the past year. Moreover, less than 10% claimed to possess a biblical world view. Less than 10% of 77 million American Christians. A core set of convictions and beliefs that they have proven as absolute truth, they no longer obtain. The other 90%, 10% claim they don't have biblical views, the other 90%, which is the, the rest of them, claim only patchwork of theological views. I told you I wouldn't get an amen. <laughs> That's alarming. So why is Christianity failing in America? Well, I, I, through a lot of prayer and a lot of making sure I wanted to understand this, the Lord said, I didn't put you here so that you can do it your way. He said, you're only here to do it my way. Amen. So he said that he wants us to understand something about what is failing in America. Why of our young people need to hear it? It's really not so much just our young people. It's all of us. Amen. You can't blame young people That's when we are here to lead and guide them. Correct? Mm -hmm. I'd like for you to take with me, if you will, turn to Romans chapter 1 and your Bible chapter 20. I want you to look at this story as it unfolds as Jesus talks about the situation how things are failing in Christianity. And the reason why this is important to me, because I'm, I'm just going, you know, I'm not going to hold nothing back here. Let me tell you why this is important. It's because I think we all, all love each other. I think we love our young people. Right now, my wife is in the youth, the little room with the little children. I love it. What one of the great grandparents said that I've got competition because the children just love Miss Jones so much. Let me tell you what Miss Jones does. She loves the Lord. But what she loves to do is to show them Jesus. That's something that's important. I want you to listen to this. This is going to be a hard pill to swallow, but I pray you'll drink a glass of water and let's try to push it down. In Romans 1 verse 20, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without <coughs> excuse. Listen closely. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, 
and a four-footed beast and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave him up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Listen closely, church. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use unto the which is against nature. And the wise, likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burning in their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was met. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, invent inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affections, implacable, unmerciful who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only to the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Well, that won't purdy. We sure didn't like to hear that. Next time we hold it, I hope he's nicer. We sure don't like to hear this, but listen, let me ask you a question. What will we do to bring Christianity back to our church? What are we willing to sacrifice so that we can save our children? The sad story of the perversion of this public practice that the Lord talked about, he, he addressed, listen, he went down there at Joe's Bar and Grill where everybody was drinking. Guess what he addressed? The church. Well, if, if, we want, if, if, if we want to keep our people in church, we better not offend them. The Lord made it clear when he addressed the church in Romans. He said, a people, they, they became religiously perverted. They became morally perverted. A people intellectually perverted. That, man, they just perverted the whole mess. Now, what caused this particular situation to fall in this tragedy? Why would people fall so far from the truth? What in the world went wrong? Why is out of 77 million Christians, only 4% of the youth might survive Christianity? Think about that. What went wrong? What the Lord told us. And this is the message he wants the world to hear. We have forgotten who God is. God's position. He said in verse 1, in Romans 1, 21, they glorified him not as God. Can I tell you on a personal level, Church, if we don't wake up and forget about playing church and start being the church that God has called us to do, there's going to be a massive amount of people that's going to be destroyed because the church didn't do what it was supposed to do. I grew up, church was a joke. You went because the parents made you go. You didn't want to sit there, but if you know you didn't, you might get in trouble. I never realized we are preparing our kids for education, growing up, driving cars, buying homes, 
relationships, making something but ourselves. But what we're failing to do is giving them the foundation of making this a success. We have somehow or another got this thing all messed up. This people that the Lord talked about, they glorified God not. I want you to take note that this crowd, they did this even though they knew God. Can the Lord wants us to know. We claim to be the church. We know God. Where is he? First of all, this crowd, look what happened. They didn't give God first place in their lives. Oh, we don't want to hear this. They choose a dangerous way to live rather than to do it God's way. He even said it in the, in the Bible. They decided they were going to do it my way. I, I get that. You say, you get it? But I can tell you from experience, it's the dumbest thing you can ever do. Probably shouldn't have said that. But let me tell you something. There's a reason why God made parents. I got an amen out of that one. Because we're responsible for molding and building our children into a, a direction to show them the way. Can I tell you honestly what would have happened if my mama was a good mama, but they were raised in the back sticks? You know, the Bible was, you got hit with it. <laughs> the backer sticks. Why they won't be in use to put on loopers was on your behind. But I was not raised understanding because they didn't understand what I really needed to face what I was going to face. Church, I wish I could say when I was a young person that I, I was prepared, equipped. I weren't. I weren't. At the tender age of 12, I was finding out everything the wrong way. Nobody told me what was right or wrong. Nobody decided to sit down and say, you know, this is going to get you in trouble. I learned by the old saying that you shouldn't have to learn by. Learn by hard knocks. My mama used to say, you're going to learn everything the hard way. That's not the way it's supposed to work, church. Christ is supposed to be Lord of your life. And if he is Lord of our life, we must ask ourselves a question. Is the Lord that we trust to, that created all the planets, is he the Lord that's in charge of your plans every day? Is the Lord that controlled the winds and the storms, is he the Lord in control of our mouths? I want, that's another message all by itself. Is the Lord that created the heavens, did God create the heavens? Is he the one that's in your home? Is the Lord of all the ages, is he the Lord of your agenda every day? God has got to be put back where he belongs, on the throne. Amen. Get him out the closet. Get him out of wherever you've put him. And get him back. Well, Pastor, what's this got to do with Christianity failing? Because, listen, if we look at the percentage of our youth that is making it to keep the church going, now you know why it's shutting down. Why do children want to be a part of something that ain't working? Amen. Well, Pastor, that sounds really kind of hard. Well, take it from a pro. If you don't, and, and, and you can't leave. <laughs> if we don't stop failing in the home, we'll never succeed in the church. I want you to look at Colossians 1.18. Hang on, it's going to get better. Because let me tell you something. If I could go back and do it all over again, I would. But let me tell you where I'd start. I'd start with God. 
Why? Because let me tell you why this is important to me as you look at Colossians 1.18. Are we there? Colossians 1.18 says, And he is the head of the what? The body. Everybody look at yourself. You are the you are the body. So who's supposed to be in charge of the body? And note what they said. The body is the church. Who is the beginning? The firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. What's that? That means that he might have superiority. That means that he is in control, in charge. God, church, deserves to be first in our hearts. I know we beat this to death, and boy, throughout centuries, we've preached all this stuff. But where is the heart in this of really letting us understand something? That Christianity is failing in this America and in this world, it's because it's not in our heart no more. Let me tell you, when I look at young people, well, I look at us. I hope and pray the Father God above that nobody ever has to go through what I went through to get to Jesus. Amen. You say, well, I won't. Don't never say what you won't do. I never dreamed that I'd be messed up on drugs and alcohol Suicide. I never dreamed as a young person sitting in a church somewhere hoping the preacher didn't go over 12, hoping that I didn't do nothing to get popped. I never listened to one word that was being said. Let me tell you why. You know why I didn't listen? Because the person up there didn't believe it himself. Because, yeah, I hear you. Yeah, you're talking from the Bible. I hear you. But how, how does this affect me? You know why most of the percentage of young people don't come back into to the church? It's because they don't think it affects them. Listen closely. It affects. It affects your decisions. It changes the way you think. Because let me tell you something about good old Satan. He will keep you longer than you want to stay. He will beat you more than you want to be beat. And he won't let go of you until he's ready. And when he's ready is when you're down on the ground beating so low you can't go no lower. Why do we want our children to experience that? If we claim to be the church, why wouldn't we want to show our, our children the right way? Well, I don't know, Pastor, why? Don't be offended. But listen, don't do as I say. Yeah. Anybody want to finish that? I was told to do. You better do it or I'm going to beat you. You better do it. Anybody? Come on. Yeah, yeah but. Yeah. Uh-uh. Not what I tell you. Just do it. Yeah, yeah but. No buts about it. Just do it. Yeah, but what about, don't worry about me. You just do it. Come on. You tell somebody as hard-headed as me just to do it. Guess what I'm going to try to do? Not to do it. I know y'all ain't going to amen me. That's okay. I, I, I'm good with that. But let me tell you something. God ain't no joke. And neither is Satan. I never would have dreamed in my wildest dreams as a young person that I would be in a jail before I was able to get my driver's license. Well, you need to learn by your mistakes. I got a better idea. Yeah. Let's show them yeah. the right way to do it. Let's just show them. Hey, look, here's, hey, listen, trust me, young people ain't stupid. Right? Say amen. Thank you. Let me tell you something. If you tell a young person, say, look, now if, if, if you go down this path, 
here's all the rewards that's going to be there for you. This is your path. But now, if you travel down this one, here's where it's going to start. Let me tell you, most of them will choose, oh, okay, that's going to really look bad if I go down that path. Well, this looks really great. If I put them in a line and, and put $500 at the end of that trail right there for every one of them. And then I said, now, if you go down this trail, you're going to run into bears, wolves, tigers. Now, you hit that trail, they're waiting for you. Now, all joking aside... I'm kind of wondering, but raise your hand if you would rather. How many of you would rather have $500 knowing that's what was the end of that path? You kidding? They wouldn't even wait. They'd be hit that path so fast, and I know some of them that said he wouldn't run would run. <laughs> right straight to it. They wouldn't run to, they, they wouldn't run to a bear cage. Right. right. So why, why, why is Christianity failing? We're not showing them which path to take. We don't want to make them mad. Well, if I make them mad, they'll leave. I, I love this. One lady one time, elderly lady, she was a grandma. And she was from the old school. You know how it is. And one day her grandson come home and said, Mama said, Grandma said, where is your homework? I ain't doing it. She said, excuse me, what did you say? She said, boy, go get me a switch. Boy looked at her, well, that's all right. They told me in school today that if you laid a hand on me, I can call social services and have you arrested. Grandma looked at him and said, boy, <laughs> pack your bags. Where are we going? Never you mind. Pack them. Get in the car. She drove down to the magistrate's office. She walked in the door. Ma'am, you don't have an appointment. I certainly do now. She said, he said, Ma she said, hold it. She said, uh, my grandson just come home and told me that uh, he weren't going to do something and I was going to correct him on that problem. But he informed me that your system said that if I touched him that um, I was going to be arrested. And the guy didn't say nothing. She says, now, here's his bags. You raise him. God's got a design plan. Listen, I, goodness, God don't want bad to happen Amen. to none of us. Amen. But unless we understand what we're doing wrong, we're missing the boat. Do you know why a lot of youth ministries is going in different directions? Listen closely. Because they don't have to deal with the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're old school. Oh, gosh, they're going to teach them right from wrong. I don't know about that. Well, let me tell you something. If you leave everything up to the young people to decide, I'm going to tell you something. Young people, there's certain foods they don't like. Yeah. Right? I, there was some stuff I didn't like. Y'all better be glad you weren't raised when I was raised. Because <laughs> if it come out of the garden, you eat it. Yeah. Now, one of the worst things there ever was that hit planet Earth was uh, spinach and rutabagas. When I was a little kid, I love them now. But I sat there and I said, I ain't going to eat it. Believe me, I ate it. Not quite the way I had intended. But I ate it. And guess what? It became good. Anybody ever was raised on something you didn't like, now you like it? Okay, guess what? Anybody think about the Bible. If we we're raised on it, we might not like it, but it, but it, but it will become our best friend. Yeah. It will yeah. become more of what we need. See, if I, if I only knew that it wasn't my friends that was leading me in the wrong direction, it was Satan. Yeah. 
It was the enemy that didn't like me. He didn't care if I went and hung out and done wrong and did the things. He didn't. Listen, I thought it was I was part of the gang or the group. No, Satan don't care. All he wants to do is remove you from God's blessings to, to destroy us. All he wants to do is destroy the relationship that God wants to have with you. Because let me break the news for you. Whether you believe it or not, God created all people. You are God's children whether you act like it or not. Right? So guess what? So what does Satan want to do? He wants to rob you. He wants to destroy. And sad to say... He's doing it. Yeah. Come on. Only 4% will stay in church. Barely. Look around. You think we got problems now? Wow. Don't worry about if you got a preacher that's going to stay in the pulpit and preach. You better wonder if anybody's going to be here to hear it. <laughs> I knew y'all wouldn't be amen in this much good. I, I kind of knew this. Lord let me know that too, by the way. <laughs> also, we have forgotten God's provisions. The church was not thankful. Let me ask you a question. Anybody been blessed this week? Amen. Anybody gone through a surgery? And you woke up. Anybody got, did anybody get out of bed this morning? <laughs> did anybody walk? Yes. Anybody said, did you say thank you Jesus for this day? Yes. There you go. We're getting somewhere now. But this crown, had, they became vain in their imagination. What's vain in their imagination? Let me tell you because I can write the book on it. I, wasn't, I didn't know what vain meant. Whatever I thought of, I did. If it feels good, there you go. See, y'all with me too. Y'all just as good as I am. I heard all of you on that corner. <laughs> See, y'all, I'm, I'm watching you. Amen. The problem was, what does this mean? They took credit for all that God had given them. Listen, I, I love this. This is so simple. Even I can understand it. You're not in charge. You really think you are. You really think you are in charge. Let me ask y'all a question. What would happen if God turned off the air? So let me ask you a question. How in charge are we? You ain't. You aren't. You are not. You ain't. The bottom line of it is, we're not. So why do we try to, 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 to do stuff without God? Yeah. Yeah. I love what this is. And again, I, I'm tying this to everybody, but I want you to understand. Every, anybody ever called you stupid? Dumb as a rock? The elevator was short, stopped up halfway. Anybody ever remember summer school? Do you know what that is? Y'all don't have a clue. Does somebody know summer? Well, I do. I invented it. <laughs> it was for people that couldn't get it right during school. Because, see, the only reason I went to school was for recess. I didn't care. So mama said, I'll fix you. That's why they call it summer school. I learned earlier on. Get it right while you're there. But I still didn't. But Satan had got in the middle of a bad situation. And I'm going to be honest with you because I'm, I'm going to throw my cards on the table. I wasn't very smart. At least that's what Satan said. That's what Satan used people to tell me. Yeah. And, and, and I believed the people, right? Yeah, I believed them. And so I, I walked around and thought I was useless and, and would not never amount to nothing and, and didn't have the education to do nothing. In fact, Jeff Robo Dean on the Hillbillies had more education than I did. And I, I really felt that way. Let me tell you some good news. Y'all ready, ain't you? About time. When I met Jesus, 
I come to him just as I was, messed up, broke, and I looked like a train wreck. I felt like a train wreck. But when I come to Jesus, he said, I want you to go into ministry. I laughed. I said, you got, we got a problem here. It's called education. I want you to know what he did. The Lord says, you've listened to the world. The world showed you the wrong path to take. He said, but I'm, I'm going to steer you down this path. Are you willing to walk with me? I said, yes, Lord, I'm willing. I wish I'd have learned that 30 some years earlier. I wish somebody would have showed me that right path. I wish the church would have been man enough to say, hey, look, what you're doing is wrong. This is where it's going to go. You, we do not need to do this. This is not good. I want to show you the right direction. Why is this important? Because when I went in God's direction, let me tell you what happened to God's direction. Even though I went to Bible college and I went to a community college, I had atheist teachers in the community college that actually was against everything I was doing because I was going into ministry. And let me tell you how God works. God gets on your side. See, I was on Satan's side and he didn't care. He just wanted me dead. Yeah. But when I got on Jesus' side, all of a sudden, this atheist teacher come up to me and says, I want you all to write a term paper on your, what, you gonna, what you do for a living. What, what do you want to do? Well, when I put preacher, he said, I don't accept religious. I said, well, that's what I'm going to be doing. So he proceeded to give me a very low grade because he's an atheist. Let me tell you how God worked. Some of the people in there, because I was the oldest thing there, I was older than the teacher. <laughs> I mean, let's just be honest. You got 16, 17, 18 years old and I'm 40. Do the math. They all felt sorry for me, which was good. Because <laughs> I didn't know the front end from the back end of a computer. I didn't know how to turn the thing on. And they started working with me. And, and, but, but whenever he gave me that low grade, I got a letter. Listen to this. From the school in Kenansville that said, we have heard and now we are changing your grade to a B plus. Because the students told us how he had done. He was fired. That was God. Now, here's something good. Quit listening, letting the world teach our children. Let God. Amen. He took somebody that they hadn't even figured out names for why I couldn't learn. I aced Bible college. I aced it. The lowest grade I got in the two-year liberal arts was, guess what it was? That B+. Plus. God has got a wonderful plan for our youth. Yeah. But if we don't show them the way to him, yeah. we're opening a door to let them find it on their own and take it from somebody that knows. Don't leave us to find it on our own. Amen. We won't. I am a small percentage of the people in my area of LaGrange, North Carolina, very few of us survived in my era. Do you know why? It's because a whole lot of them was not as fortunate as I was. The majority of people that went down the roads I went on are gone. So don't roll the dice on thinking you're going to be that one that's going to go through the stuff we're going through. Listen, this is our responsibility. We claim to love our kids. We claim to love ourselves. What we ought to do is America needs to learn that the reason we're failing is because we're compromising and showing more of the world than we are of the word. Amen. Yeah, amen. How can we say we care about our young people and let them go out there and try it on their own? That brings the very dead end. I know you're glad. We have forgotten God's personality. They professed to be wise and they became fools, the Bible said. They questioned the creator. They worshiped the creation more than they did creator. Let me tell you something, folks. If there's anything in your life that is more important than your children, you got a problem. 
And if the church has got more important things to do than to teach this and to live this so that we can share it with them, we got a problem. I know, I know this ain't going down good. It's like trying to swallow Alka-Seltzer. <laughs> Keeps wanting to fizz back up. Anybody ever swallowed, tried to swallow Alka-Seltzer and it wants to fizz back up? See, this is the way this message is going to go. It's going to keep coming back up. We ain't going to like it. Because let me tell you something. I'm not breaking your toes. I'm breaking mine as well. Because let me tell you something. And this is from the heart. I have a daughter. To this day, she has nothing to do with me. Because when I was lost, didn't know Jesus, our relationship got separated. Not that I didn't love her. Still do. I got three grandchildren that I don't even know. And they live in just one town over. Just think what could have happened if somebody would have showed me God's way and directed me and made me do it whether I liked it or not. Maybe I'd have that relationship with my daughter or my grandchildren. I can't change the past. All I can do is live for the future. That's why this message is important to every one of you in this room, every single one of us. Do not allow Satan to educate our kids. Amen. Please, because one day they're going to be grown. Yeah. One day they're going to have children. One day they're going to have to take the responsibility. And if we don't show them the blessings of God's way, they're going to find out the hard way. Yeah. I have a granddaughter that is permanently disabled because of drugs. Yeah. Never will walk again because she took the wrong path. There are two paths that are stretched out for every one of us in this room. And this is what God is saying to every single soul in this room. Whether you're on the cameras, whether you're in the back room, or wherever you are. Listen closely. There are two paths that are stretched before every one of us. This path. This path is to paradise. This path is to perversion. If we don't choose Christ, we are at saying, God, I'm not, I, I, I'm not ready to walk this path. You know why you're not ready to walk this path? Because you've already started walking this one. And you're being blinded and deceived. Yeah. Take it from a very small percentage of people like me. You don't want to walk this path. It's only by the grace and mercies of Almighty God Himself that I'm not dead. Amen. It's only by the grace of God. And the only reason I'm still here is to tell you, get off this path. I don't care whether you're that age or our age. It, it doesn't matter. Get off this path because at the end of it is Satan. Yeah. And all he's doing is wanting to destroy you and, and just take everything away from you. Yeah. This path is to Jesus. Yes, Lord. This is not just a service. This is God's word saying, wake up. Yes, the world is failing in Christianity, but God's in the room today. He is showing us His way. God is watching. Did you know that? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He is actually watching us right now to see if His words that He speaks through me is going to penetrate our hearts. 
So I want to ask you this question. What path 